Welcome to the 350th episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. We recorded this live in Melbourne with a very special guest, James McCann, who's currently living in Austin, Texas. He's an Adelaide Australian comedian. He's opening for Shane Gillis at the moment. You've seen him on Kill Tony, and it's uh, a great guest uh, spot from James on the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Enjoy the episode. Thank you so much for your support. I can't believe we've hit 350 episodes without missing a single podcast of Spearhead Sundays. Thank you. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 350 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast live in Melbourne. <laughs> All right. How exciting. We have a very special show for you today with a very special guest. Uh, you may remember him uh, from his recent appearance on Kill Tony and his frequent appearances on the, on the Matt and Shane Secret Podcast. He opens for Shane Gillis in the States. Welcome to the stage for the first time on Spearhead Sundays, James McCann! Oh, yeah, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Did I do that? No, that was me. What a pleasure to be here. Let me tell you, look, Lewis knows this. I, was, I came to Melbourne today. Because I was meant to be on the project, but I was I got off the plane and they said you're not coming on the project. Uh, we've got Peking duck. You don't. It was not the band. It was an actual plate of the meal. Anyway, the uh, James you let goes. Me come on here. James goes. Oh, they bumped me for Peking duck. Isn't that bullshit? I went. No, that makes sense. I think. <laughs> I think that actually makes perfect That's sense. Fair. That's a good decision by the booker. But you know what? I, I couldn't get I reckon this podcast has a higher listenership than the project has a viewership, so I'm not <laughs> too concerned. That that is true, absolutely. I think well, you know, we've got two empty chairs in the front row here, <laughs> and I still feel like we've got more listeners than the project. Now you're holding on to Middle Australia. They've lost Wagga Wagga. It's over for the project. I don't think you're still going strong. That's right. That's right. Although I don't have anyone in Launceston. I recently went to Launceston and, and I made the biggest booking error of my fucking life in terms of booking a venue. What did you book? I booked a, a 450-seat theatre, <laughs> thinking that it was a 200-seat theatre oh. because it was cheap. And I knew at the time of booking 200 was way too big, but I thought at least we'll get 80 there and it'll feel good. I sold 17 tickets <laughs> in a 450-seat theatre. Did that... you do the show? Oh, yeah. That's insane. I, I would have cancelled the meeting. You're a coward. I am a coward. <laughs> I sat on the stage with my legs dangling off and placed the microphone on the floor and had a lovely conversation <laughs> with 17 people who were very grateful that I was there at all, but were very confused. Uh, I hope they bought a lot of merch. Uh, did they? they did not. <laughs> One guy goes, I got here and, and I've seen a few shows at this theatre because it's the only theatre in Launceston. And, 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 I, and he goes, I thought I'd come on the wrong day because there was no line. <laughs> That's so sad. It's so... Uh... It, no, it was a real what the fuck am I doing with my life moment. I mean, I've had 17 people at a show before. It's just usually been in a basement. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard when you do a theatre and I go, oh, we're going to block out the top section, but they'll feel full at the bottom. Yeah. They go, they'll be sitting in the orchestra pit. And even oh. then... They're just the string section. Dude, literally, <laughs> so we couldn't fill the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the bar staff to come in at least? The bar staff weren't rostered on because it wasn't worth selling drinks to 17 people. Oh my God. You know, that when we got there, there was a... Sm there was, when you do big theatres, there's often multiple performance spaces. And there was one room that had like a little podium and a, and a ring of chairs. And I thought, oh, thank God they've set this up for me so it will feel full. And they said, no, that's the Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> that's actually happening at the same time as your show. And there were more people there than were at my show, which felt rough. It made me want to start drinking, become an alcoholic, and join the AA meeting. Uh, you got to do something. You gotta... Next time you can drag them into the handicap toilet. That's a good... Do you know what I mean? Perfect yeah. acoustics. <laughs> yeah. Someone gets a seat 
It, yeah, it would have been much better in the dressing room of, of like when you when you do a massive theatre, they give you and they go all out on the dressing room. We could have fit the whole audience there. Lewis, you're coming back. <laughs> you're coming back. He's a handsome man. He's looking good. He's a free man. I'm going right. to try and get this man in America. America yearns. That's for right. Talent. I I see you in America, and I see you in Austin dodging bullets, and I think I want to be there. I moved next to a project. Right. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought it was a retirement village. They look the same. This is what people are. I, in Australia, you see like little two-story houses in a big green space with an mm. almost fence out front. You go, that's, that's where the boomers have gone to have a vibrant community. Yes. No, not here. That's a lot of cookouts, a lot of drive-bys, a lot of fentanyl. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so you've seen a few, a few drive-bys? I've heard the drive-bys, I've seen the results of the drive-by. I'll say this, someone is very unhappy at my local McDonald's. <laughs> I will not be using the My Macca's app today! Dude, every time they ask me at the drive through if I'm using the My Macca's app, I wish I had a gun. Yeah. I'm not downloading your fucking app. If you have the My Macca's app on your phone, you should get a gun and use it on yourself. <laughs> That's what I think. What kind of animal? I remember I, I toured with someone who had the My Macca's app and we were in, in the airport and they and they had to spin a wheel to see if they won a small chips. Nice. And I've never wanted to hurt someone more <laughs> than in that moment watching them spin the wheel and I thought, they've got you. You're not even human. You've got the My Macca's app and they've tricked you into spinning a wheel. I, this isn't very relatable. No, I, I just... <laughs> Yeah, he's very upset. There's nothing more relatable. If this was about getting five star status at a Hyatt membership, people wouldn't understand. Surely we've all struggled through the dilemma of are we finally going to get the Macca's app? Because who's got the Macca's app? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, yeah. dis <laughs> disappointing. How, now, do you get scores? I've seen people get points that like build up. Do you get levels on the app? Well, I work at Macca's. So oh, nice. You have to have it. And did they make you say... Do you, are you using the My Macca's app today? They make you say that? They do. Is they everybody do? abusive? Yeah. Because I find oh, myself, I'm really nice for most of the order, but I can't help myself. Go, no! There's no way, it's, there's no, it's a choice on their part. I also worked at McDonald's and had a wonderful, I worked with a drug, okay, I'll come and give you a little bump. There we go, bump of cocaine. No, but seriously, folks, I worked, I was my only McDonald's, I met a Drews. I worked with a Druze. Do you know about the Druze? Druze? It's no. like the Yazidis that don't worship Satan. It's a, the small, it's a small Middle Eastern religion. Yeah. Of which there are like 15 people in Australia. It's, it sounds like a dyslexic guy tried to become Jewish. Yeah. He <laughs> kind of got it wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm their... Jewish. <laughs> Jewish? Was that how you spell it? If you read their core texts, that is also the impression that you get. Mm. But uh, you can't, because they're very secret, they only marry each other. And I really was getting into the Druze, and I liked them yeah. a lot. And then I think, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I think they have the highest rate of female genital mutilation. I could be getting that wrong. But uh, right. they've got a great logo. Wow. Great. <laughs> One of the top logos. What's the, what's the logo? Is it just a disembodied clitoris? <laughs> Is the pink circle? It's very important. No, it's a five-pointed star with mm -hmm. different colours on each point. That's nice. No one really knows what it means. They're very secretive. Mm. Even when they're working at McDonald's and spilling most of the secrets. Oh, I was a band. They would never let me out front. I would always say, "Let me, let me talk to the customers. I've got a rapport. I'm ready to shine." And they would say, "Not till you master the grill." And I never mastered the grill. I was just always on. I was. All, I didn't even. It was just. You know, ah, fuck, just get two fillet of fish in there, keep doing the thing. You know what I'm talking about? The up and down. The I, would, I wouldn't put you in front of a customer either, <laughs> watching this. That would be so fun and sparkling. Would we like to upsize that meal today? Whoa. You have such an interesting accent where it's, I wouldn't call it like an Australian accent, sure. but I also, I also wouldn't call it an English accent. It's like a, a mix of very posh English and then a little bit of Australian but then like heaps of autism <laughs> and it's like this theatrical why have we decided that loving trains is a disease <laughs> I think it's just a beautiful thing that a man can do in his spare time I, this is Adelaide most Adelaide people are you from Adelaide? yeah, well, yeah, yeah she doesn't sound like you how at all how have you been here? this is not a uh, a day 
Well, let me, t- are you ready for- let me tell you. If you go to a nice private school in Adelaide... This there is it is. <laughs> but I go to America, and they can't pick that I have a posh accent, or a weird... They just think I sound like Kangaroo Jack. Like, <laughs> oh. Why did you say school? No, I said school. School plants. School. Darts. Pool. Pills. No convicts blood in me, missy. <laughs> No, that's not true. There's fucking stacks of comic blood under here. Under the, the red here is a dead giveaway. Are you really from Adelaide? Yeah. Where are you I from? Yesterday. Where are you from? Uh, like growing up or now? Now. Where are you at now? Uh, Andrew's farm. Oh, wow. Yeah, you wouldn't get the posh accent up there. What you get up there is a lot of dead-eyed suburbanites, but I'm glad that you're here. Now, it's Andrew's farm. Hold on. This will be fun for the international audience. <laughs> What, yeah, are you, what are you say, doing in Melbourne? Uh, I flew in for this. For this? Wow! wow. <laughs> Thank you. How exciting. Uh, My mum paid for it. Your mum paid for it. <laughs> Round of applause for your mother. <laughs> Excellent. Very impressed. Very impressed. Hey? She says you're looking very healthy. That's good. That's, that's, <laughs> mum, that's mum code for I would fuck that man. <laughs> what that is. That's good. The new jawline has, yeah. has added a lot to my life. So, oh, uh, we found out just before the show that we both had the same surgery. Not the yes. jaw surgery, yeah. different. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Could, could anyone guess <laughs> what surgery we've both had? Is it the, the circumcision? <laughs> Congratulations. This, this man knows a chopped up cock. <laughs> How about this though? How about this? Okay, we'll throw a spanner in the works. Not at infancy for either of us. Wow. Yes. Wow. How exciting is that? I I had a late circumcision, so did James. Who? Th- okay, we'll do a little poll. Who do you think got circumcised most recently? <laughs> Who, and anyone vote for James? Round of applause for James. Okay. And who thinks I got circumcised more recently? Let's show them the scars so they can make a firm decision. Uh, I was circumcised when I was uh, a toddler because uh, because my dick grew faster than my foreskin. (laughs) And to the point where every time I tried to wee, a a balloon would appear and then eventually explode. And I was a little boy, so I just thought that's how you wee. You wee into your foreskin, and then it builds up, and, and that's fine for a little bit, but then you feel intense pain, and then piss gets everywhere, but it's kind of fun. And I thought that's how you wee. Uh, but according to a doctor, that was actually causing a lot of damage to my urethra. So I got a late circumcision, and then I thought, oh, great, now me and Dad have the same penis. <laughs> So, it's just so weird because I, I've also had a circumcision because of foreskin trouble. So I shouldn't feel weirded out by it. But I, yeah. I did want to throw up my fish and chip dinner. <laughs> well, you're talking, uh, how, how old were you when you got uh, circumcised, oh, I was, James? Uh, Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a little something about God's chosen people. <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, I built up. Uh, Anyway, the uh, so it wasn't to do with cleanliness, and the, the urologist insisted that I hadn't done it to myself mm-hmm. with overwanking. But uh, uh, when a small amount of scar tissue appears on the foreskin, it really uh, builds, and so it was sort of it was like when you have a pair of track pants that you you tighten. You know, you can't get the yeah. knot undone, but then yeah. you gain some weight, and you have to keep wearing them. So it was not good. <laughs> But what is hard about having that as an adult mm. is that the surgery does nothing for the libido. Mm. Yeah, and they don't give you special. You oh right, so how many more tablets? Every <laughs> erection is a disaster <laughs> for weeks. This will be fun. So, uh, <laughs> and there was what man? I had to start wearing a condom <laughs> because that was as it was healing. Very raw. Yeah. So first time I'd bought condoms in years. And Phil Shepard, they thought I was using it for the wrong kind of sex. If, if anyone is, if anyone at home is struggling to understand, it's like imagine peeling a grape. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I'll say, 
My wife was due to, I got the plan when I had my circumcision and my wife was uh, scheduled to give birth. Mm -hmm. So I got to time the circumcision to uh, shortly, it was just around the time she'd given birth so our genitals would be destroyed at the same time. <laughs> Both of you walk around the house yeah. like, oh, can one of you fucking change the baby? <laughs> but then when we finally got to come back together in an intimate sense, mm -hmm. you know, it was like two virgin lesbians penetrating each other for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, that's a poem I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I said that in public. You are, you are a bit of a poet, James. I see uh, every now and then you're posting poetry on, on Instagram. Does anyone want to hear a little poem? No. Yeah. Give us a poem. If you need a poem, I'll give you a poem! All right. <laughs> nah, seriously, wow, there's so many. At least I can do the dirty ones. I was going to do some of these on the project, but now I can do the real ones. <laughs> Filthy, uh, oh, it was the most, uh, uh, the ass man is a coward. No, I don't like that poem. That's no, not bad. The ass man is a coward, the tit man tells it straight, the leg man has long since retired, the foot man is a reprobate, the clavicle man died out with men of ankle and of wrist. As far as I'm aware, the good personality man doesn't actually exist. Anyway, this is a better one. They usually don't rhyme. This is, uh, Shakespeare on Spear Sunday. Okay. <laughs> New Book of Pipes coming out soon. Splish Splash. I'm the number one selling, for a while, I was the number one selling poet in Australia. I topped the, I topped the Amazon charts because poetry sales are so low. How many books do you need to sell to top that list? Genuinely, like, if you sell 15 in an hour, you're number one. <laughs> That's what's keeping bookstores alive, is teenage girls coming in from TikTok and tricking their parents into thinking they're reading fantasy, but it's just porn. porn. <laughs> any, any porno book readers in tonight? Fuck yeah. <laughs> you like your porno books? What are you reading at the moment? Um, Court of Thorn and Roses. Yeah, Court of oh, Thorn and Roses. Is that a porno? I've seen that one. It looks like a real book. And that's what I'm telling you. There's that's the one with the, what, the red cover and the, it's like a block. Is it, oh. I don't really look at the cover. You don't really look at the cover. No, that's all. <laughs> Is this your partner here? No, that's my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law. Okay, I was... Okay, never mind. If, she, if she's reading a book, leave her alone. So, what, what's like a sex scene that you would see in this book? Because when, when I hear A Court of Thorns and Roses, I think like, you know, a book about war and Someone dragons. Someone Game of Thrones, it was like, there's too much other stuff happening. <laughs> Just the fucking place. That's what we... <laughs> Like a fairy, fairy porn. porn book? So fairy porn. That's not mine. <laughs> so it's gay. I'm it's fairies? Oh, you mean, are they magical fairies or Shakespeare in the Forest fairies? Fuck you. Can you read this book? kind of book keeping bookstores alive is mm. books about dinosaurs for young boys. Can you hear that? That's the, the autism in my audience. Yeah. Yeah. You said books yeah. about dinosaurs for young boys and a bunch of yeah. adult men in a bar started yeah. screaming. The T-Rex didn't have lips. That's liberal propaganda. <laughs> It's weird. My son's going to be so disappointed when he finds out these dinosaurs were made up. That's going to really hurt his heart. Oh, seemingly some people here are going to have their feelings hurt too. They're not real! <laughs> what do you mean they're not real? Dinosaurs are real. I've seen the bones. A Stegosaurus just sold for like five million dollars. Sure. <laughs> You're a good Catholic man, James. No, they're probably real. They probably were real. I love them. I've, been, I've gone to more dinosaur museums in the last... I went, okay, I went to America with my young family. Mm -hmm. And the, my wife doesn't work. And we. This is the real reason James moved to America, because it's the only country in the world where a lot of people will agree with you when you say dinosaurs were <laughs> never real. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there is a man who's built... Noah's Ark to yeah. the specifications in the Bible and turned it into his own private Noah's Ark museum. And so how big is it? It's like, I don't know, whatever, 78 cubits is, but it's a lot of, <laughs> it's so many cubits and it's real fancy and it's just yeah. in a field. You can do that in America. Mm. Here, we draw the line at big orange. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make an orange that's the size of a small man that kids could go and smoke meth at. But in America they go, no, 
we will have the ark I'm prepared for the future. I don't know where it is. No, it's in the northeast. Mm. Ah, what a joy. Dinosaurs probably were real. I'm coming around. In America, you can touch the bones. What do you mean? Yeah. They let you touch them? They have so many dinosaur bones that you go to a dinosaur museum and you're allowed to physically put your hand on dinosaur bones. That's awesome. Yeah, how fucking six that, fellow autistic man. (laughs) Dude, thinking about those bones has given me a bone. That's That's exciting. Hey, James, I've got here throughout this show, I've I've thought, what are we going to do for episode 350? And uh, I thought we'd do something special. I've got my my favourite series of email questions sent in by a listener that have ever come in through the history of the show that I thought throughout this experience we could go through them. Yeah. So uh, I do a segment, miscellaneous bit at the end. It's the worst part of the podcast. It's where people send in emails to ask me questions about their life and we encounter some truly fucked up individuals. (laughs) So we've got three emails here. We'll we'll do this and we'll go away and we'll come back. All right, great. All right, so this is the first email which was received on Thursday, April 20, at 2023 at 7.43 (laughs) a.m. Subject line. My ex lost her virginity to a dog. (laughs) This is my favourite. And what's great about this is there's two more emails that are spaced months apart from the same person. So we get to experience this journey together. Um, hey, Lewis, you can call me... You can call me Hound. Nice. I really don't know how to explain this, so I'll do my best to sum it up because I figured you would have a good laugh at this. So I've been dating this girl on and off for a few months. And the first time we had sex, I noticed that she had a paw print tattooed on her crotch. Should have been a red flag, but I didn't think anything of it. So after we'd been dating for maybe a month, I asked her about the tattoo. She got very defensive and said it was just a tattoo. So I dropped it and we continued dating. (laughs) Spoiler alert. The subject line is true. I finally asked her again about a month ago, but this time she said it was for her old family dog. Uh, I kept saying that it was a very weird place for a memento for a dead, beloved dog, until she finally told me that it was not because he died, but because he took her virginity. (laughs) I was caught completely off guard. It was kind of like when someone slaps you and you're standing there like, what the fuck just happened? She kept trying to defend herself, but the whole time I was just thinking, well, you wouldn't get a tattoo from having sex with a dog once and then regretting it. That's true. You know, people usually get tattoos and then regret the tattoos. They don't usually regret an act and then get a tattoo to commemorate it. (laughs) She obviously liked it and probably had sex with the dog multiple times. I had so many questions running through my head, it was like my brain got flashbanged. I didn't know what to do, so I just left. I blocked her number and every social media account she had. I went to my buddy's place and we just drank the rest of the night away. After a few days, I unblocked her and tried to talk to her, but I could not stop thinking about the dog and her, and it just grossed me out. So I broke up with her and told her she should look for someone else at the dog shelter. In hindsight, she really didn't seem like the type to fuck dogs. <laughs> but does anyone? She was always so shy and nervous when it came to sex, would not like to experiment. I just thought it was because she was religious. I guess it's because I was not a dog. <laughs> you should have put a little peanut butter behind his ear or something. <laughs> I would, my gut reaction would be like, oh, that's not true, he's making that up. But I read a study. Mm. I was on a deep, I was in a, what? I was on a deep Wikipedia dive, and reports of bestiality when we were in like a, an almost agrarian society, yeah. as people started to move to cities. Mm-hmm. So I think it, like World War One, it was something like thirty-eight percent of people responded <laughs> positively. Men, like men and women, very similar numbers to of having a sex with animals because you're you know you're living out there, you're lonely, you're horny. There's animals all around. And uh, so I... I the, the lady that reads fairy porn books was shaking her head. <laughs> That's disgusting. I only fuck tight. a different creature with wings. <laughs> Someone else was very tight-lipped in the room, and I wondered if they thought, oh, no. 
<laughs> words getting out that uh, this sort of thing does happen. I better look confronted. Uh, but that was, what I, that was what I guessed you were. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, no, so I do. I mean, this would definitely happen. This is well within mm. the. There was a. I believe there was an Adelaide couple who were arrested and their laptop was taken a couple of years ago for filming a dog pornography video. But I think that was just kind of lingus. I don't think it was... A See, oh. co- maybe a controversial opinion, but yeah. I only think it's animal abuse if you fuck the dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you let the dog fuck you, gross, but I wouldn't put you in jail. <laughs> because the dog's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people let their dog lick them on the mouth and they go kisses. I think that's fucking foul, but I wouldn't put them in prison. No, I Is that not bestiality? I'd, I'd kill them. I'd take them out of society. <laughs> for sure. I think that's correct. But I agree that it's not bad at the dog. It's bad for what they're doing to themselves and the body politic by yeah. bringing in animal sex. Yeah, maybe you put them in prison just to send a message out that that's, that's not really something that humans should allow other humans to do the, to themselves. I mean, what are we to make of furries as a phenomenon, if not that something lies deep within the psyche mm. of many people in the society? Now, I know we're grossed out by it, you and I, you know, fellow... Uh, Any furries in tonight? This is a, this is a like safe statistically, space. Statistically, yeah. yeah. For real? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. What's your... What's your do you have a, is this a spirit animal? Your first sona, that's the, what's your first sona? A jackal. A jackal? A jackal. A jackal. A uh, more of a rapist type animal. <laughs> I don't think if any of yeah. the animals were to rape, I would think it would be the jackal. Yeah, a jackal is quite a very evil creature. Yes. Gives... <laughs> Why did you go with the jackal? <laughs> Something different? Yeah, but never. You don't have sex with animals. No. No. (laughs) You just would dress up as a jackal and imagine you as the jackal having sex. No, you don't have a fursuit yet, but yeah. you, you want to get one? They're expensive, aren't they? I have a friend making one in Holland somewhere, or in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands? Yeah, a fursuit one. imported from the Netherlands. How much does that cost you? Oh, nothing. They're making it for free for some reason. Oh, I love the game. Oh. They're making it for free. That's yeah, nice. No yeah. That's yeah. good. That's community. I would, I would imagine <laughs> that you will find out why. Yeah. You know? He's like, I don't know, he's doing it for free, I've got no idea why. I think that when it arrives, it's going to come with a video camera and a list oh, of instructions. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you'll find out why. Oh, if it's more scary, they're hand delivering it. <laughs> <laughs> when they're done making it, they're going to bring it down. Yeah. Which scares me more. That is. kill you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at the jackal, they're terrifying. Have you seen a jackal? Give me a look at a jackal. Look at- don't. Oh, that's a. Yeah, that's a. That's a, a rapist fox. Yeah, what are yeah. you? Sure. A fox had no empathy. That's what's going on there with the jackal. What does What does the fox say? Well, I'll tell you. He doesn't say. Can I do this? <laughs> he certainly does not ask for clear, enthusiastic Ooh. consent. Jackals are. Look at this. This is the description. All jackals are opportunistic omnivores. So, <laughs> Bisexual rapists. <laughs> I'm sorry for using that word so often. I know people have a hard time, and it, you know. But uh, seriously, folks, this lady fucked that dog. Yeah, I ended up. I googled it. Right, the the tattoo near the privates. You probably know this, but that is. <laughs> That is like a, a, a like I fuck animals like s- symbol. Like if you know, you know. It's like the what'd you say? Zoophile. Zoophile. See, we got an expert in the room. <laughs> that that's like uh, when swingers they've got the upside down pineapple. For, I didn't know that. That, that what, true? Yeah, that's apparently a thing wow. from before the internet. You would walk around the supermarket with a pineapple upside down in your shopping cart, and that would mean you could fuck my wife if you like. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, a, it's an American thing because the pineapple used to be a gift that you would give to, to visitors visiting your home or people that would visit your home in some parts yeah. of America. So the upside down pineapple is like, not only can you come into my room, you can come into my wine. <laughs> is this why pineapples became so popular as ceramic objects? In interior decoration? I, I think so. Do you know what I mean? You go in a lot of houses and you see people with 
pineapple. It's there. It's like a home hospitality symbol because I think the pineapple was once quite an exotic fruit that you would. It's like a flower. It's like yeah, I brought a pineapple, and they go, wow, what a special fruit. Would you like to fuck my pineapple? <laughs> now, did this person keep writing you letters? Oh yes, yes they did. Would you like to? Would, would you like to read another I letter? Loved it, yeah. We've got, we have three letters total. I thought I would read one, and you can read the next yeah, one. Yeah, um, so, all right, that's the first letter. My ex lost her virginity to a dog. So you did, did you write back in between these? I, I answered the first email, and yeah. he listened, and, and I asked for much more detail, and he obliged. Oh, it's a different problem. My ex is ruining my military career. Oh, it's just... <laughs> Hi, Lewis, it's me again. It's resisting the temptation to read the name. You didn't read the name, and that was good. We call them the Hound. The Hound. Yes. yes. <laughs> a little bit of background first. My friends and I were only joking around with the Hound nickname, but I guess the story spread about my ex. Now everyone in my unit knows. <laughs> and oh no! Even my own soldiers are calling me Hound. <laughs> the guy's high up in his unit. <laughs> Imagine taking, from an, taking orders from a guy whose girlfriend took dick from a dog. <laughs> it would be tough to trust him with your life. Well, it's now everyone in his unit refers to me as Hound. <laughs> or the guy whose girlfriend fucks dogs. <laughs> it's, it's for long. It was funny at first. I can't believe that it would have been. Anyway, it was funny at first, but it's getting annoying. What should I do? I'm coming up on the end of this contract, and I don't know if I should stay in or I should get out. I really want to stay, but if this starts to follow me, then I really don't want to. It's not like it offends me or anything. I just don't want people to think I like bestiality. It's a good, it's important that people don't think you... It's important that people don't think you <laughs> bestiality. My old nickname was Hatchet. Wow, strong nickname. Probably because you liked the book in high school. My old nickname was Hatchet because I... Yeah, oh shit, because I brought the hatchet a book i love on deployment and pretty much any time we were, went into the field that's great it's great reading. see you that shows how much more well read you are than i am because when he said my nickname was hatchet i just assumed war crimes <laughs> and you were like oh well-read philosopher and i'm like oh he definitely beheaded some yeah. people on deployment this is why ben robert smith was so angry at his wife <laughs> It's Ben Robert Smith, everybody. Now you can't say that, it's very litigious. <laughs> it's probably not Ben Robert Smith. But it could be. But with this new nickname, it doesn't feel the same. It sounds like I'm either a fuckboy or I'm just a bad person. I don't want to go to a new unit with a bad nickname. I already have 10 years in. So I don't know if I should stick it or if I should just get out. What do you think? Anyway, you should come to America. We would love to see you live. I'm so glad he's not in our armed forces. It's not Ben Robert Smith. That's, <laughs> That's oh. good. That's good. Wow. I, I, don't th I don't think, yeah, you want all of the soldiers in your unit to know that your ex-partner has sex with dogs. I think, I think that's, a, that's a strong leave the military. Yeah. Turns out there were real perks to the don't ask, don't tell uh, policy. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> Mm. I think, what, what would your advice be to, to this man, James? Well, he didn't. It's, I mean, it's I think okay. it's, I think you, I, honestly, I reckon you own it. Because it's not yeah. your current partner. And you didn't fuck the dog. No. <laughs> you fucked the dog fucker. Yeah. And that is less bad. <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't even fuck the dog fucker. You fucked someone who lets a dog fuck them. See, I'm very pro-distinction between those two things. Fucking the dog, animal abuse. Letting the dog fuck you, great time for the dog. Disgusting for you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go with him on that at all. I, again, I think... I said the, it would be a divisive I, I think we should go down to Fed Square, find the people who've been doing this, and we should all be allowed to chuck a rock at them. <laughs> Bring the community together, or maybe a bone. I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Walk them around on a lead. For... Now, seriously, for <laughs> this difficult issue, I don't want to want you know. I don't think negative, but um, yeah. I mean, people are men also love to find a reason to be nasty to men. That's how you come closer together. Yes, it can turn into serious bullying, but you just want to joke and josh. And, you know, there could be there could be worse out there. Because yeah, I feel like. It, I feel like you join in on the laugh and you call yourself the hound 
And then when someone says why, you go, you don't want to know. And then you let them believe that you're like some kind of animal when you're out on deployment. And then when you get closer, you go, nah, it's just my ex-girlfriend. And that's a fun story. Yeah. That's your second experience. act of Saving Private Ryan. When you're all, <laughs> you're all in a church together, you know, with Vince, uh, what's his name? This is a guy from Fast and the Furious. You know, you're all having a Vin nice Diesel? time. Yeah, Vin Diesel. He's great in that movie. Vince Diesel. Vince Diesel. <laughs> Vince Petrol. I was thinking of... <laughs> It's starting to look a little Vince Ethanol, the way that it's going. It's very funny. But uh, no, I say you go with it, you have fun with it. Mm. Keep the energy up. The boys are just having a good time. Yes, yes. Now, do you want to read the third one? We'll save the third one because oh, I, right. I have some, I have some, uh, some other things. Um, we talked about our, our peni. <laughs> 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 Now, I have a, a little update um, about the mo most recent episode for you guys, a little bit later for the people listening at home. Uh, the Justin Ryan episode of the podcast, uh, if you guys heard that, I did a, a, an interview, uh, James, with uh, a guy called Justin Ryan. Have you heard of this man? No. No, okay. Um, I don't know a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's no indictment on him. What's the most respectful way to describe this man? <laughs> um, mentally disabled. Okay. Um, but... Facebook troll that uh, incites hatred against him yeah. by acting a way that makes people upset and he trolls them. You can become a celebrity that way? Yes. Wow, he must be good. Because of out there. I, of I think it's, it's like he's kind of provided an outlet for people that would really like to bully mentally disabled people. Nice. <laughs> but know that it's unacceptable to do in real life. So he kind of stands there with a target on his chest that he's painted himself and goes, come get me. <laughs> and then people go, oh, I've been wanting to do this since high school when I was suspended for it. And they bully a guy online thinking that they're making fun of him, but really they're being manipulated by a mentally disabled guy, thus making them more retarded <laughs> than he is. So what did he say? So I interviewed him on the show, and, and, and we talked about his OnlyFans that he oh, has. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I asked him about this, and he, he told me that, that the gay community are a huge supporters of his work on OnlyFans. No kidding. Yes. Are you telling me there's not heterosexual women out there trying to get a load of a disabled guy's sex activities on OnlyFans? Apparently I not. I don't believe it. I <laughs> apparently not. Um, so I thought that was very interesting and very concerning. I hope none of those men signed up to his account work in any homes <laughs> for obvious reasons. But anyway, did the podcast and I posted a clip of of that, and the clip went viral. And he sent me a screenshot, and he go he goes, "Dude, the clip's going viral." Sorry, he said, "Dude, the clip's going viral." <laughs> And I said, oh yeah, it's really cool. And he goes, yeah, check this out. And he sent me a screenshot of his OnlyFans going fucking ballistic. So that clip has resulted in thousands of gay men signing up to Justin Ryan's OnlyFans, which is a great win for him. Is he Australian? Yes. So he's still getting his NDIS money, even though <laughs> yes. legions of gay men are paying him for... The yes. NDIS probably paid for his cameras. Yes. <laughs> I asked him this. That's true. So he has... The NDIS work is... Oh, oh, fuck, man. Shut it down. It's a lot. Every dodgy wog I know has an NDIS business. Shut it down. They're paying for hookers now. Yes. The government pays you to fuck a prostitute if you can't... Read good. I mean, that is not... Build infrastructure. No, I disagree. Because if you don't let quadriplegics fuck prostitutes, like Stephen Hawking, they go to Epstein's Island and they fuck the kids there. Which I don't understand how it's even possible. How does Stephen Hawking... Like, like I'm not a victim blamer. 
Let's get that out of the way. However, I feel like with Stephen Hawking, you would need to enthusiastically participate because it's not like he can hold you down. I feel like, are we sure that Stephen Hawking himself was You're not, not a victim? You say any of this in a court of law anymore. <laughs> and that's why society's backwards. How does it work? Did you, like it's not, a, an island isn't even wheelchair accessible. Like what are they, did they like duct tape him to a quad bike with a remote control attached? I don't get it. For with Ghislaine and, for and Jeff for grabbing his by the hands and knees and throwing him into a pile of nine-year-olds? I don't get it. Maybe that's why his face is stuck like that, because one day he tried, really tried to put a digit in a nine-year-old and he got stuck that way. Oh. Is this why he's smiling? Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know if, if he was a perpetrator or a victim, we need to check the chat logs on his little machine. Man. I bet they did record what Stephen Hawking was saying on his little machine. Younger. <laughs> he, just puts in the, he just puts in the minus symbol. He just keeps tapping the minus symbol. <laughs> Pressing the down key on the minus, keyboard. Minus, minus, minus. We don't know that he was fucking on the island. Not everyone on that island was doing bad stuff. My favourite account was for one of the girls in the lawsuit whose testimony was about Al Gore being on the island. Did right. you read this? What was he solving, the climate crisis? <laughs> well, this is the front. So she was like saying all these other people were doing terrible sexual acts. Yes. And she was, and they were like, and Al Gore was on the island. He was like, mm -hmm. yeah, but he just wanted to go swimming and hang out with his wife. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> Isn't that nice? You come to the pedophile island with your wife and you're doing... <laughs> Well, in I your do. Own little world to even know that's what you meant to be. Anyway, I thought that was great. Yeah, no, I do. I do feel like the 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 in like the first invite isn't come to Pedophile Island. Yeah, it's, it's more so come and enjoy the beach in our, my private plane, and then you and then when you're there, then you offer the the demonic Real treats. Real slow, like like yeah. if someone has marijuana at a party. <laughs> <laughs> Man, nice to get high. I'm just kidding. But. <laughs> she's nice. She's cute. Nah, she's. Uh, that's how you do. I'm just saying. That's how you do it. If you were the CIA. This is uh, the the final email. Uh, would, would you like to read it or shall I? You can read it. No, I'll please. read it. Okay. Uh, in, incredible update. This is the first of December, 2023. So about six months or so from the first email. Hey, Lewis. It's Hound. I've, I really like that it's not the hound, it's just hound. That's good. It's hound. Uh, maybe that's, maybe he's trying to get his girl back. That's why he's calling himself hound. That's the strategy. Babe, you'll never guess my new nickname at work. It's hound. It's been a while. Not sure if you remember me, but my... Uh, <laughs> Not sure if you remember me, but my ex-girlfriend fucks dogs. I have great news. Sorry, he's gone to the present tense. Uh, I well, I, I assume... it was one time. No, she has a tattoo, brother. Yeah, but that's when she was fucking the dogs. I thought she was living in a hopeful new future where that had come to an end. She fucks dogs ongoing. I think it's a it's a passion. Oh. Are you Love it. are you putting a zin in? It's nicotine. It's... <laughs> They don't sell zins in this country, so I, uh, Nicorette gum, but I just wedged it up there to feel... To feel something. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought I was being discreet. No, um, that's just fast. I've never seen someone do that with, with gum. It's a, it's a lozenge. <laughs> I was going to try and vape on the project. That was my big idea that would be funny. Yeah, James messaged me, because I'm doing the project, and I thought, sure you are. And then he said, I'm thinking of funny things to do, and I, yeah, he just goes, all I have so far is vaping. Which is good, because it's not technically dis disruptive a, enough for them to cut it out. Is it a crime? Probably not. I don't think, they would certainly not be happy. Uh, they found something to not be happy about. You know, know you know what would, what would really upset them is if you were on the project and was actually funny. That would upset them a lot. <laughs> Terrible it's show. Too difficult. I don't want, they might still have me on in the future, so I don't want to talk it down too much. It's a but great show. Up. It's a great program. One ideas. of the best programs in 2007. I've got ideas for turning it around. They've got to stop dressing like they're the rich people in the Hunger Games. That's one big problem. Yeah. I find, as they tell tradesmen how to vote in progressive ways. <laughs> to me, that that's the project. It's just the gradual progressivization of Australia's... Upper working classes. Excuse mm. me, I, 
I understand why they couldn't have me on. It's, uh, I'm sure Peking Duck didn't discuss anything of that nature. I'm sorry. Please continue. On to, on to some real news. All right. Uh, my ex-girlfriend fucks dogs. I have good news. Oh, sorry. I have great news, good news, and lightly bad news. All right. Uh, I moved to a new duty station and I stuck it out. The bad thing is a soldier from my old unit is also here and told everyone my nickname is Hound. <laughs> he even got me a nickname tag that says Hound. I definitely smoked uh, a name for making someone do workouts as a punishment, in brackets, okay. I definitely smoked the absolute dog shit out of him for it. I like how he's used dog shit. <laughs> Uh, but I had a good laugh, and he's going to be my PT partner for a while still. A lot of military jargon that I don't understand in there. Um, great news. My soldier told me my ex took my advice and started working at a dog shelter. <laughs> the dog shelter is near the army base. <laughs> where she was almost immediately arrested for having sex with a dog. Yeah, that's present tense for sure. See? Again, controversial opinion. Most dogs don't get adopted. Most of them get put down. Let them fuck you on the way out. That's, that's all I'm saying. You can't fuck the dog, but... Never let this man work in an orphanage. <laughs> a couple buddies of mine who were cops out there and apparently she had been working for the shelter for about two months where she would work night shifts and have sex with different no. dogs no. Oh, the, this woman's having a train run on her <laughs> disgusting what's that what's that um, 3D animated animal show where the, all the dogs have jobs Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. they're taking her to town town <laughs> Quite a few conductor corgis on that show. Um, okay, this is, a, this is a wild two sentences. She would work night shifts and have sex with different dogs. Then, the second sentence, she was given a light warning. <laughs> I feel like that's a no-strike policy for fucking the animals. It's hard to get good people working with the dogs at night. You know, you got to... I want to see where this goes. What did she do to get... If that wasn't enough to get fully fired, what did she... <laughs> Sorry, I just read ahead here. She was given a light warning about a month in when she was caught by the boss sucking one of the dogs off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of yeah, no, for that you don't get anything more than a newspaper across the nose. I think. <laughs> That's, uh... Bad, bad dog shelter worker. I like that obvious... See, this is what I'm saying. There is a tier system to sexual offences with animals. Even the dog shelter knows this. <laughs> Fucking a dog. Bad. Jail. Getting fucked by a dog. Lose the job. Sucking a dog off. Warning number one. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the experts are on my side. <laughs> After that incident, the dogs and the... Sorry. The boss. After that incident, the boss installed hidden cameras all over the building. Yeah. Suspicious. Yeah. Very suspicious. I just would have fired the woman. This guy wants to film her. <laughs> After that incident, the boss installed hidden cameras all over the building, where a month later she was caught having sex with the same dog. <laughs> that makes me think that people would come into the shelter to adopt a dog. They would bond with this one and she would go, oh, you don't want this one. <laughs> You don't want this dog. This dog's much happier at the shelter. <laughs> it's less bad thinking that they were monogamous. She's beginning to be... She's starting to orient towards the good. Mm. But it couldn't have been that good because she didn't adopt it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good... Uh... She's probably already in a relationship. She's cheating on the dog yeah. she has at home. <laughs> She is now in prison for five months nice. and has to serve a year's worth of community service. Hopefully it's not around my dogs. Anyway, uh, thanks to your new face, my ex will probably come to you instead of to me. 
That's unduly mean. Yeah, I don't look anything like a dog. <laughs> Bastard. Hope you have a shit one. The hound is out. That's our final hound here, mate. Round of applause for the hound. <laughs> My favourite contributor to the show. Sounds like he's doing well. Yeah, he's adjusted. There is one final email that's not that's just not an update about this story, but he has said that he's been stationed in Germany for some reason. So he's coming to London with his unit to my show. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get to meet the hound in person. He says he's going to bring glow sticks and he's going to be dancing. Do you have a glow stick? Fuck yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, there's a bunch of glow sticks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. James is in the dark on this. <laughs> Luckily, we've got glow sticks to illuminate him. Uh, I, 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 uh, a lot of people have come to my shows by themselves. Is that which, you let them know that they're alone? Yes, I That's said. Great. I said if you're by yourself, you have, you must bring a glow stick because I saw a K-pop star yeah. perform at a comic convention, and there was one guy that was definitely there for her. Everyone else was just there for the convention, and he yeah. brought glow sticks, and he was dancing the whole time. I mean, it's great. It does also let all the predators in the room know which women are going to be easier to... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Maybe what? that's just me. But that's <laughs> where... I, no, no, that's just me thinking defensively about how to protect women. <laughs> it's quite a progressive man here. The world's most progressive Catholic man. <laughs> um, now, James, I'm very happy that you're on the show. Keelan, are you there? Yeah. Are you, do you have a microphone, Keelan? Uh, yes. Yeah. Keelan, bloody Keelan's <laughs> slacking off, as usual. Hello. Hi. Hey. Keelan has been here the whole time. Like, like every episode of Spearhead Sundays, he has been here to contribute nothing. <laughs> uh, until the moment he is called upon to which he arrives late. <laughs> um, James, you're, I'm happy that you're here on the show. Um, especially because... I uh, discovered something that, that you made for me many years ago. I don't remember this. You don't remember this? No, you don't, you don't remember this? Huh? That was your cue to... <laughs> that was your cue to play the thing. Remember the, the one thing that we had all pre-organised to play for the show? You Like, the one button you have to press... Can we do that again? You just tell me that you don't remember I, So I'm starting to... Is, was this for the catamaran plan? Really? You don't remember this? Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> Why don't we take it from the top? Okay. Leave <laughs> this in, this is gold. Hold on, James. You're telling me that you don't remember this? Congratulations both on your fantastic recent successes. Lewis! I watched your impassioned defence of freedom of speech on SBS recently. Sir, I applaud you. Not only did you muster the courage to enter what threatened to be a hostile setup by tut tut progressives, but your performance was commendable, funny, articulate, and graceful. Thank you. As you both may remember, last week you were kind enough to let me perform at your new stand up comedy show downstairs in a video game restaurant. That was weird. Thank you for that. I had a great time. You always have to be polite, you know. And I did have a great time. It was a wonderful audience. And uh, one exception, though, to having a great time, I ordered a beer and it cost $16. And I felt violated. And you can't do that. The man, I said, can I have a beer, please? And he said, yeah, what beer do you want? I said, I'll have a bolter. Not that fancy a beer. It's from Brisbane and it comes in a can. And the man goes, yeah, great. And he... Puts it through, but the price doesn't flash up on the screen to tap. And he starts pouring the beer, and I see the price is $16, but he's already pouring the beer. That's, at most, we're talking $5 worth of beer. You're taking $11. Big that tangent. is a really immoral, really My podcast has a lot of tangents. Priced. I know we're all coming back from COVID, and life is hard for everybody. $16 for... What I don't even think was an imperial pint. I don't know. I don't know. But it was in a very thick glass, and I suspect that that was there to trick me. You cannot. $16 for fucking hell. I'm, I'm poor. Okay. Look at this. It was a pleasure to perform for your astonishingly wholesome audience. How long is so this? So many comedy show audiences that I see minutes. are packed to the brim with losers and degenerates. 
mean-spirited drug addicts and the sexually profligate, but not at your show. That audience overflowed with the freshness and vigour of optimism and youth. Luke That's you. I am writing to ask if I can go on your podcast, the Luke and Lewis podcast. James. That's what I would, yeah. The answer is no. Because it, <laughs> because it does not exist. However, we have brought you a beer. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. When, when I was Googling James, I found that video message. No, it's too large. <laughs> When I was Googling you, James, I, f- I found that video clip, of, which was a video application to be on the Luke and Lewis podcast as a guest when it was running in 2022, um, and I never saw that. Um, no, no one was getting back to me. I'll tell you, I also wrote one to Michael Hing asking if I could go on the project. And he took a lot. It's funny, on the same day, to be rejected and accepted at the same time. It doesn't matter. It's all positive. It's going well. That was a what? Wow. Now I think a lot of the young, non-sexually profligate people were there mm. for Luke Kitchell. <laughs> I think, uh, we have at definitely... least at least one profligate. In... <laughs> you definitely have. The, yeah, you're a rowdy, beautiful man. It was a weird video game arcade. I loved it. Is it mm. still there? It is still there. I'm gonna need to burp at some point. That was a dreadful mistake. <laughs> Why, thank you. Yeah, look, James Noah Falls McCann, Canterbury and Plan. I will go on any podcast. That's not true anymore. I don't have time, but people... Hold on. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate... No, I, I was very touched to be allowed to do that show. I, uh, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't... It was good. He wasn't opening for Shane Gillis at the time. <laughs> Man, I struggled to get work for a long time in this country. You know, the, 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 we'll talk about this and then I've got one more thing and then that will wrap it. The, I heard, you know, when, whenever a, an Australian comedian or an Australian anyone achieves success and then leaves, all you have to go off are rumours of how they did it. And I heard a great rumour about you yeah. of how you made it to the States became Shane Gillis's opener from a guy whose name I can't remember who I'm fairly certain was not friends with you. Okay, I'm so, interested to hear the Chinese Whispers version of the... So, what I heard, he goes, dude, did you... He was going, have you seen James McCann is opening for Shane Gillis? And I went, yeah, that's, that's really cool. And he goes, dude, he was on Kill Tony. And I said, yeah, that's amazing. One of the biggest comedy podcasts in the world, almost. That's amazing. And he goes, do you know how he did it? And I said, I, I assume by being a good comedian. He goes, no. When Shane Gillis came to Australia for the first time, James McCann looked at me and said, I am going to become Shane Gillis's best friend. And then he snuck backstage at Shane Gillis' show uninvited with the one goal to befriend him and somehow pulled it off and then Shane loved him so much that he said, come and tour with me forever. I mean, almost none of that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to this and going, what kind of mystical powers? If anyone snuck backstage and was like, hello, I'm James Donald Forbes McCann, Kevin Ray fan. best friends and I work for you now. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I had never seen his comedy. Yeah. Uh, my brother was a big fan and took me to the show. Yes. And then uh, my friend was opening and as a treat for my brother, I like texted Rudy who was opening. I said, can you get us backstage? That was really good. Yes. So we did go backstage and hang out. You cast a spell on him. No, we, <laughs> well, we talked about the, because uh, Rudy is a Maori. Yes. Yes, I know. And Rudy. he was trying to like say how cool Maoris were. And mm. I was like, they fucking hate people, and um, they committed a genocide they don't like talking about. And Rudy got real embarrassed, and all the Americans were like, hold on, tell us more about this Maori genocide. And I did. Do you know about the Moriori? I think so. I've heard uh, some I'll of it. I'll talk about the Moriori till the cows come home. I do know, I can't, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but I do know some, uh, some Maori law where they... Uh, met up with like an English guy and they said we'll give you lots of our land if you give us lots of your guns and the guy was like these fucking stupid savages fools what a good trade I get land and all I have to do is give up a few guns and then the Maoris took the guns and killed all the Englishmen and went sucked in you're a savage 
That's, That's why they got a treaty, because yes. the English were very scared. Yes. That's the future of the treaty movement in this country. <laughs> First Nations people will have to start killing at an alarming rate. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that is that is funny that that's it's all right. There are a couple stories about me since I got back that I've been hearing mm. that are like close to real, but it makes me either seem much better or much worse than I really am. Well, I feel like if he told me, um, if if instead of telling me that you just decided to become best friends with him and then pulled it off, I feel like that sounds much less weird than bonding over genocide. Yeah, we bonded over genocide, and then I did say at the end, I said, can I have a view in Melbourne? Mm. And he said, sure, is that close? And I was like, yeah, all right. It was in Adelaide, so yeah. it was, I had to buy a business class flight, but I thought, this is a good thing. Yeah, an investment. Yeah, and then I, uh, and then I didn't know it was a faux pas to eat all the sushi backstage, <laughs> and, I, and they all just attacked me for eating all the sushi. Mm. Anyway, and now we're friends. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's not, I mean, his story is better. It makes me sound like... I'm like, I think you keep that, I think you take his Chinese whisper story. I said, he, we will be best friends. <laughs> Man, I just alienated everyone in the comedy business for 15 years doing mm. it. To be, a headliner would come to town and uh, I, I would not respect their work. Yeah. And I would tell them. And they don't like that. And I now would never do that. But I was a very... Yeah, the signs of autism were present. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just like angry young man in the comedy scene. There's a lot of them out there, and it's a mistake. And then I, I was, I, yeah, I was giving up on comedy. I wasn't following it anymore. And that's yeah. why I was in the show. Yeah. It's funny. Who's, do you remember who said that? I want to know who. I don't that's remember. Fun. I want that story to go out there. Well, we've just put it out there. That's that actually true, guys. Like I have incredible that. magnetic powers. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're going to end it. Thank you so much for everyone who came out. Yeah. To episode 350. Round of applause to James McCann. Thank you for having us. We're really nice being here. I'm so impressed. What a bomb. What a bomb that dropped at the end. Little secret. A mystery for the viewers at home. Um, I just wanted to say before I get out of here, this podcast has been the one constant throughout my entire career, pretty much, uh, from when I started doing comedy, when I got obsessed with stand-up, when I started listening to the Bill Burr podcast and was like, what the fuck, you can do a solo podcast? I didn't even know you could do that. I've been doing it since I was a young man. Now I'm, I'm 30 years old, I'm still doing it. 350 episodes, we've missed a lot of them. This should be... <laughs> This should be around episode 500, but I was very ill for a very long time. Uh, this got me through COVID. This got me through my surgeries. This, the, the entire foundation of my career is built on the listeners of this podcast and the people that support me on Patreon. That's the spine of everything that I do. So thank you so much to everyone who came out tonight and everyone listening at home. This show has changed my life and I love doing it every single week. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>